Hello and welcome to the 2024 baking challenge. This is week number 11 and we're doing something a little bit weird today and that's okay because I like taking chances. Um, so today we are making sausage, apple and cheddar pocket pies. And if that sounds like a strange combination, you're not wrong, but think about it. Apple and cheddar go together fairly well. Sausage and apple go together fairly well. Sausage and cheddar go together fairly well. So in theory, this should work. And honestly, who doesn't like a meal that you can just pick up and eat? I used to make little hand pies with a uh, sloppy joe inside. So of course I made those out of biscuits and not pie crust, but whatever. Anyways, I hope that you will have fun and join me along on this recipe. Let's get baking. You are gonna have to cut me some slack on this one because I'm going old school off of printed recipe and um, I'm not prepared. So <laughs> we're just gonna try to get through this as best as we can today. Um, so instructions, let's see here. Oh, right. There's a couple things about this recipe that I have had to change. Um, the cheddar cheese powder that goes in the crust, couldn't find it. Well, let me take that back. I could find it. I could find a giant container of it for like 20 bucks on Amazon. I'm not going to need it. I'm not going to go through that much. Um, my next idea was to just buy a couple of cheap boxes of macaroni and cheese, like Walmart brand and use the cheddar cheese packets that come in those. When I went to do that and they were out of stock and I'm just letting it go at that point. What I'm going to do instead is I am going to add a little bit of actual cheddar cheese into my crust recipe. I don't know if that's going to turn out. I don't know if that's going to burn or make it watery, but I'll, I'm going to try it anyways. So if you can get your hands on cheddar cheese powder, that's awesome. You should probably try that. You don't have to put cheese in your crust at all. It can be a regular pie crust. It's not that big of a deal. Remember, we're being nice and easy. If you're new here and you're just joining us, I can promise you four things about the baking challenge. Number one is that um, we're gonna have fun. Wait a minute, was that number three? No, we're cutting corners. <laughs> so if I can make it easier, that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, we're baking on a budget. I'm altering recipes. That's number three is that I'm altering recipes because we've got a picky eater, limited access to some strange ingredients, and I have a lot of food allergies. And the last thing I can promise you is that I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes because that's what I do and that's how we learn and that's okay. What is it Bob Ross says? There's no mistakes, just happy little trees. So happy little hand pies, pocket pies. So we're gonna start off with two and a half cups of King Arthur pastry flour blend. You can use all purpose flour. It's not that big a deal. Really, it's not. So uh, there's my half. Here's my one. Here's my one and a half. That's very, very easy. Cheese powder. Um, now this says two tablespoons of cheese powder. So I'm just gonna, I don't know what I'm doing and that's okay. I don't have to know what I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just here for a good time, not an accurate time. Uh, our salt, we've got a half a teaspoon of table salt. Do I ever measure my salt? No, I don't. What are you gonna do? 16 tablespoons of cold butter. If you have been here when we've been making anything with a crust, like I think the second week was the homemade pop tarts, which King Arthur calls their tasty toaster tarts. Um, cold butter is king. You want cold butter, the minute it starts to melt, your pie crust is not gonna work out as well. So the colder the butter, the flakier your crust is going to be. 
It helps to cut it into pats first. Um, I mean, you're going to want to do that. You're going to want to make sure your butter is cold. Some of these recipes are going to call for melted butter. Some are going to call for room temperature butter. And anything with a pie crust is going to be cold. So the other thing you're going to find a lot with pie crusts is that we have to mix it all by hand. And that's a real pain. Um, you can use a mixer if you want. You just got to watch it because this isn't a cookie dough. We don't want things to be completely blended. You want the chunks of butter to stay pea sized. So um, using a blender, you got to watch to make sure you're not over blending it. Listen, I've used a blender to do pie crust before. A lot of times my hands don't work very well. Um, and it's just, if I'm going to bake, that's how I'm going to have to do it. Or I'm going to have to ask Scott to come in and mix it for me. And he will, if he can. Um, but today hands are feeling pretty good working pretty well. So I'm gonna just use my good old pastry blender, cutter, mixer. I don't remember what the technical term for this is because I just am not a technical person today or most other days. So why did I want to make um, this recipe? <laughs> Uh, I have never been like a big fan of the apple and cheddar combination. Um, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with it. I know a lot of people that are, and maybe that's why I've not been a fan of it. Like I can think of at least one person in particular that I, uh, that, yeah, that loved cheddar and like apple pie. And, uh, you know, it's funny how sometimes a negative interaction with a person can really like taint the weirdest things, but I guess that kind of caused me to have a problem with cheddar and apple, but thanks to time and the desire to try new things and being older and wiser and healthier and happier. Here I am making my apple cheddar combination and I'm excited to try this. I know it's weird and maybe that's kind of some of my motivation behind this um, is that I like to try the weird things because maybe I'll like something. And I live with a very picky eater. Yeah, I'm talking about you. He's right in there building Legos because it's spring break. Yeah, I'm talking about you. You're a picky eater. Don't even. We were recently on vacation and we had to make sure that the dining options were safe for my allergies and also had chicken fingers or chicken nuggets or some kind of food that the picky eater would eat. And that's okay because we want everybody to eat. I remember, you know, old school, if you don't eat what's on your plate, you don't eat. We don't do that here. If, if you're not gonna like it, we'll make sure that you have something that you will eat. That's how we do here at this house. And I'm okay with that. God, I feel like I'm a little soapboxy today. I don't mean to be, guys. I'm just, I'm really, Kind of feeling mellow. We had that run of decent weather and now it's cold yesterday and chilly today. And yes, I do make these recipes a few days ahead. I fill these ahead of time because it takes me a while to edit the video and to get the recipes and the blog and everything written. So it takes me a little time. So I have to do it a couple days ahead of time because I have a life. I mean, especially right now, it's consumed with starting seeds and getting the garden plants going, but here we are. Okay, now that I've bored you all to death, we have pea-sized clumps of butter in here. 
The next step is to drizzle the ice water and toss this all together, making a cohesive dough. Does your water need to have actual ice in it? No, it just needs to be very cold so you're not melting your butter. So you can measure out your water ahead of time and stick it in the freezer because this doesn't take that long. Um, and then you're just gonna drizzle half of that. And um, I'm gonna use a big spoon to mix because I really don't, I really don't want my hands to get covered in dough. I just don't want that today. <laughs> it always bothers me a little, but today I really just don't want dough under my fingernails. I have, was starting herb seeds earlier today, so I was up to my elbows in dirt. I think it's gonna take, I might actually have to get more cold water. Um, it's kind of seeming like that's what's gonna have to happen here. Um, so I was, I was starting more seeds and, you know, when you're done with that, you've got dirt under your fingernails, you gotta go clean it up. And I keep my nails pretty short anyways, but ugh, I just don't want anything else under my fingernails today. Yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit more water. My dough is starting to come together, but it is got a lot of flour down in here, so. Let me just grab some very, very cold water out of the fridge. Now, what we're gonna do when we get your dough together is we're going to divide it in half, cover it up, and we're putting it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Um, and while we make the filling, oh, that was too much water, shoot. See? Uh oh. Um, it's kind of icky now. I'm gonna, yeah, I too much flour. My bad. So I'm just gonna or too much water. So I'm just gonna drop a little bit of flour in here and see if I can't get some of that excess. Oops, it happens. It's fine. There's hardly anything that you can do in this kitchen. That you can't undo. Happy little trees, remember? Happy little trees. I've been on a British baking show kick again and uh, I'm fascinated in the evenings watching that show and the different things that they're making knowing that I don't understand half of what any of it is and that's okay. I don't have to. Okay, so you're gonna divide the dough in half, shape each half into a disc, cover it, put it in the fridge for 30 minutes while we make our, where's my plastic wrap? It's right in front of me. Um, while we make our filling. And I will warn you, we will be dealing with raw meat and maybe you don't care. I hate raw meat, it's seriously my least favorite thing to do. Um, Scott even offered to, to help because he knows I just ugh, hate raw meat, but that's okay. I got this. I, usually he makes dinner because he, we joke because he's the picky one and I'm kind of not like, it's fine. As long as it's not going to kill me, if you put it in front of me, I'm going to eat it. Um, so I know he's texting me. Um, but I've got this. I can do the hard things, including messing with raw meat. Ugh. All right, that's disc shaped enough. Let's do the other one, stick it in the fridge, and then we'll get going on the filling. The filling is the important part, and I'm gonna be making some changes to that too. I'm so sorry but you should definitely follow along with the recipe because my changes are gonna make this not nearly as tasty and that's okay. Cause it's still gonna be good. I have faith. I have faith it's all gonna work out. Except for plastic wrap. Good grief. I hate plastic wrap so much. Ugh. Okay. Let's see. 
push this out, get it wrapped. Oh, that was raw dough. All right, there's another disc shape. Okay, into the fridge. Let's come back in a couple minutes to make our filling. Okay, so the filling is pretty simple. It is raw sausage meat, and I'm just going with Jimmy Dean regular because that's what we have here. Um, now it does say 10 ounces. This is 16 ounces. I'm just going to throw it all in because quite honestly, I don't have anything else to do with sausage. So seriously, raw meat just gives me the heebie-jeebies so much. I'm going to get a really big fork here. We're going to have to mix it all up. So let's see, let me angle this camera down a little. Maybe give it a zoomy zoomies here. Okay. Here is our sausage meat. I do like sausage biscuits and gravy, but that's okay. Um, the next deviation that I'm going to do, you're going to want to add a cup of diced onions. Um, I love onions. Scott likes onion flavor, but not the actual onions. So I'm just adding onion powder here. Probably a little much, but uh, you know, what are you going to do? Um, you're also going to add a half a cup of cheddar cheese grated. Um, that's probably more than a half a cup, but I don't measure cheese except for with my heart. Um, fourth, a teaspoon of black pepper. Also not really measuring this. That, that looks good to me. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and try to get this mixed up as much as I can before I add my apples because I have to still have to peel and chop the apples. So you're going to need one cup of Granny Smith apples. They need to be peeled and they need to be diced. So I won't do that. I'll spare you that. Um, I will do that off camera. Although I do have a decision to make. I, <laughs> I'm not going to dice them myself because remember what I said about cutting corners? Yeah, that's going to be more work and time than I'm going to want to put in. So I have my Vidalia chop wizard and my big decision is, do I want this size? Oh, I guess you can't really see that. Or do I want teeny tiny size? So, I have my meat filling all mixed up. Before I start dicing and peeling my apples, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the oven on. We are going to want that oven on to 400 degrees. It's not gonna stay on 400 the entire time, but you're gonna wanna go ahead and preheat your oven, not your onion, fat goes in raw. Um, <laughs> clearly it's been a day. So preheat your oven to 400 degrees peel and dice your apples and I will catch you back when that's done. I decided to go with the teeny dices and I love this thing. There are so many different versions of this tool out there. Um, sorry, this is probably really loud, but I decided to go with the teeny tiny pieces because oh. <laughs> because I think it'll be better. And they want you to peel it because um, apple peels when cooked up get really like rubbery and tough and weird. I'm trying to make it quiet now. It's never gonna be quiet. So two full size apples looks like about a cup to me. That's what we're gonna go with. Again, I clearly am not measuring anything today. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. That might be a little more than a cup, but oh well, I'm here for it. It smells really good. Like this just smells good. The sausage, the onion, the, the nice sharpness of the apple. I can see that this could be a whole bunch of really weird but complimentary flavors. And I'm excited to try this. So you're gonna wanna get your apple all mixed up into that sausage, okay? 
All of it. I have everything in here, yes. I don't know that my apple's going to get incorporated all that well because it seems like maybe I have a little bit much apple, but I'm going to keep working on it and then we will come back when it is time to roll our dough. See you back in a couple minutes. Okay, I am back. The apples are diced and all mixed up with my filling. It smells really good. I am going to start rolling out. now. It says 1 8 to 1 4 inch thickness. I'm going with 1 4 Remember my handy rolling pin here has these guides. So I put my 1 4 on. Um, the other thing you're gonna need <laughs> is a six inch circular cutter. Um, now I have been resisting getting a circle cutter set for like biscuits and things like that for the simple fact that I haven't needed it that often. Um, I've needed a few since we've started this challenge and haven't had that. So I think probably when I am done with this recipe, I'm gonna go ahead and order some <laughs> because it's quickly becoming a necessity here. So what I have instead, since I do not have that is a bowl. Um, this is a cereal bowl and it just so happens, my handy plastic kitchen ruler, it just so happens to measure six inches across. So this is what I'm going to be using to cut out my 16 circles. Um, my dough is sticky because I added way too much water because I was not patient enough with the mixing process. It is a process. You have to be patient. I am not patient today. That's okay, we're gonna do this anyways. So the reason that we have, um, the reason that we have divided our dough into halvesies is because we are putting lids on these pies. These pies are going to be pocket pies. So they're gonna be completely encircled. You know, a lot of times pie crust is left uh, untopped, you have an apple pie, you might do some lattice work or something like that. That's not going to be the case here. We are going with fully closed. This recipe is supposed to make eight pies, so we're going to have to do this a couple times. Um, I'm going to lightly flour the rim of my bowl so that hopefully it does not stick. And this is the tricky part here because this thing does not have any handles. I will have to probably cut it a little bit better with a knife. That's okay. Just <laughs> doing what we can with what we have, right? That's, that's the best way to do things. Just try your best. Okay, that's two. So I'm going to, oh yeah, I'm going to need to lightly cut around there. Let me just grab a knife. I want to be very, very careful on my, on my awesome cutting mat or my rolling mat. All right. Oh, it's sticking because I need more flour down. When you have your circles, you're going to put them on a tray lined with parchment paper. Um, I have a little oven. I will only be able to fit four per tray. That's all right. Because if I'm being very honest, I know that Malcolm is not going to eat this. So it's just going to be Scott and I having this for dinner tonight. Um, and that's okay. We, like I said, we don't force it. He'll try a bite. He'll say he doesn't like it and we'll go from there. This one got all kinds of wonky. Again, I was too impatient with my dough when I was mixing it. So my dough is sticky and wet and it's really not supposed to be like that. So learn from my mistakes and my impatience. Um, make sure your surface is nice and floured. And then we're gonna roll this out again, see if I can't get two more. I feel like I don't have enough to make eight pies. Even rolling it out so thin, I really feel like I don't have enough. Um, 
Also, my dough is sticky. That's not helping any. Um, oh, well, live and learn. Now, if your dough starts to get sticky for no reason, like you did a better job than I did and you didn't really rush it and uh, you didn't overwater it, it could be that you're taking a little too long. Maybe your room is warm and your butter is starting to melt. If that's the case, you're gonna wanna wrap up your dough, stop what you're doing, wrap up your dough and stick it in the fridge for another 20 minutes, half hour. That butter needs to stay nice and cold so that it's nice and flaky. I think I can get one more out of this. So I guess we're only doing four which means I'm gonna have a lot of leftover filling. There are some things that you can do with this leftover filling. You can cook it up, put it in an omelet. I don't know, eat it after you cook it, like a hash kind of style. Possibilities are all there. Gosh, it does smell so good. I am really excited about this. I was a little nervous. I was a little on the fence about it. Um, boy, am I... Rolling skills are not really working today. That's okay. Just gonna do the best we can. Um, I, was, I was nervous about this one, but it smells so good. So much for not getting pie crust under my fingernails. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, this just smells so good that I can't help but think it's gonna be amazing. Okay, this one is almost, yeah, it's, y'all, it's okay when things don't go right. It's okay when things don't go right because we just keep trying. Just keep trucking along. Gonna have to redo that one because it's stuck to the mat and got all kinds of weird. Maybe this time I can get it to be a little bit more of a circle so it won't stick quite as badly. And I can actually fit the whole bowl on there. Do, 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 here we go. All right, you know what? I'm gonna reflower the edge of my bowl too. I'm kind of glad that this dough didn't make up um, <laughs> enough to do eight of these because I'm getting worn out after four. And I have four more of these to roll out. That was pretty good though. Okay, setting this aside for the moment, I am going to move some things around and then we're gonna get these filled and then we'll roll out our top. So give me just one second. Okay, here are the bottoms of the pies. And it says that you want a fourth of a cup heaping of the filling. Um, I'm not gonna lie, after the whole bacon, tart, raw meat, or raw egg incident, I'm a little nervous about this. But we're gonna going to go for it here. We're just going to follow the directions, cross our fingers, and hope for the best. So I do have my heaping one-fourth cup of filling. Oh my gosh, this is going to leave so much filling left over. I will absolutely have to either make more dough or figure out what to do with this. It is kind of my fault because I did use um, the entire case of sausage, which is 16 ounces, and this recipe only calls for 10. Okay, so you can see these are heaping, positively heaping. I know the apples are gonna bake down, so I'm gonna set this aside, and we are going to roll out the tops. I was a little confused about this part, um, not, the, not the rolling out part, um, other than how to open this. Man, I hope everyone, well, I don't hope everyone out there struggles like I do with plastic wrap, but it would sure make me feel better if somebody could chime in and be like, oh, plastic wrap's the worst, I hate it, it's so awful, blah. 
terrible, terrible, terrible stuff. It's so bad. That would make me feel a little bit better about my struggles. Um, before I put this out, I definitely need more flour. Since, like I said, my dough is super, super duper sticky. Okay. Here we go. Let's turn this out. Boom. Sticky, sticky dough. Let me throw this plastic wrap away. I don't ever want to see it again. A little more flour on the top here. Flip this over a few times. All right, here we go. So same thing as when we did the bottoms. We're gonna roll this out to one inch, eight, one eighth inch thickness or one fourth. Um, if you want it a little thicker, I think I have my math right there. One fourth is thicker than one eighth. Oh, that just kind of flopped right over, didn't it? Okay, um, where's my, where's my flower duster? Now, I did add full-on shredded cheddar cheese to this, and now I'm starting to question that decision, but I don't know, I know you can't see on camera, but you're gonna see lighter spots in your dough. That is um, your butter, and that's what you wanna see. You wanna be able to see that. So the part that has me confused about this recipe is that they didn't say that you need to cut vents in your pie. Um, did not mention that anywhere. However, the pictures on the website do have vents cut in. So I think I'm gonna do that. Now, I've got two of these cut out. Let me move everything over here because I want to show you how to put the lids on. There is a trick to it. You are gonna need some water. Put this right here. See, now I might have too much flour. It's a whole experience making these today because I'm not prepared. Usually I prepare for this somewhat. Okay, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna get yourself a glass of water or a cup of water. You're gonna wet your finger. I mean, you could use a pastry brush too. You're gonna wet the edge all the way around the bottom here. Oh, I think I just touched raw meat and that's grossing me out. Make sure it's good and wet because that is what's going to help seal the lid on. So here we go. I'm gonna stretch it a little. You're gonna have to stretch it. And then you're gonna press. We're pressing down to seal the top onto the bottom. And you might have to stretch as you go, and that's okay. You're gonna wanna crimp these. You could do it all pretty with your, with your finger and, and make it all wavy. Um, I'm gonna use a fork, which would have been really great if I had gotten a fork out before my hands got gross, but I didn't, and that's okay. I'm gonna wet the fork though, and just kinda go around here and I decided I'm gonna vent two of these and the other two I'm gonna leave alone. Um, so I know that apples put off a lot of steam while they're cooking. Let me go ahead and do this one. Boom. Okay. And go all the way around. Make sure it's good. Ugh, I hate having all of this on my hands. Okay. And then again, we, <laughs> this one is almost not big enough. I am pulling it as I seal it to the edge here. Just kind of stretching as I go. <laughs> kind of like how I put on a pair of old jeans. 
All right, dip in the fork, crimp in the edges. And I'm kind of, I feel like I have some air trapped in here and this recipe doesn't say anything about that. So um, that's the other reason I'm really leaning more towards venting. Anybody that's made a pie that has forgot, like a fruit pie that's really stuffed, that's forgotten to put the vent in it, you know it's gonna blow the lid off of your pie. I mean, not lattice work because that's automatically vented. So to vent, you're gonna grab a knife and you're just gonna cut a couple of slits in the top. I'm gonna do four. And I know I said I would leave two unvented, but I think that's unwise. So I'm gonna vent all of them and just cross my fingers that I'm doing the right thing here because old King Arthur did not tell us. And that's, that's a little rude if you ask me. My fangirling is taking a, taking a break today because I find that to be very rude. Okay, come back in a couple minutes. I'll have these other two done and we'll talk about the baking process. Okay, I have the lids on my pies. I went ahead and vented everything. Um, obviously, if that was a bad choice, I'm gonna tell you in the comments. So read the comments before you start this video. Um, here's the deal. Your oven should be preheated pre to 400 degrees. You're gonna put these in. Um, it didn't even say anything about like an egg wash or anything. Um, so, I don't know. Um, Anyways, we're gonna put these in at 400 degrees, set a timer for 15 minutes. At 15 minutes, you're gonna lower your temperature to 350 and bake for another 15 to 20 minutes or until golden brown, okay? I am going to also, um, when that second timer is done, I'm going to put a meat thermometer through the middle of my pies just to make sure that that pork is completely cooked because we are not about making anybody sick today. All right, here we go into the oven. I'm putting mine on the middle rack and I usually have this rack down one, but I moved it up because I wasn't sure if these things were going to swell up or not. So while those bake for the 15 minutes and then the 15 minutes at 350, I'm gonna get this kitchen cleaned up because it's a disaster and I'm gonna figure out how to save this filling until I figure out what to do with it. So catch you back in about a half hour. Also, as a side note, I'm not sure why this recipe only made four pies for me when it's supposed to make eight. Um, I made sure that I followed the directions. I even rolled it out to thinner, the thinnest option. Um, so I'm not sure. <laughs> I am not sure what I did wrong. Um, nope, nope. I know exactly what I did wrong. I only made half the flour. Looking at this now, it's supposed to be two and a half cups of flour. And if I'm remembering correctly, I used my half cup measuring cup only three times, which means that I did a cup and a half. So no wonder my dough was wonky. There it is, I solved the problem. I made a mistake. That's okay though, we won't have leftovers. I can always make more batter or more dough and do this again if we like these and make a round for tomorrow. I'll let you know how it goes when the baking is done. I'm glad I solved that problem because I was really scratching my head um, about <laughs> where did I go wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I did not measure correctly. Always measure correctly. Don't be me. Learn from my mistakes. Okay, this. This looks pretty good. It smells really good. Uh, it doesn't look exactly like the photo on King Arthur's website. It's not got that glossy. I did have some leakage going on even with my vents and the cheese that I added to the crust got a little crispy, but it looks really good. It smells really good. I put the thermometer in and it was, well over what it needed to be to be considered done. So I'm, I'm just gonna, <laughs> just gonna pick it up and eat it. But I kind of wanted to show you the inside. Yeah, that sausage is absolutely done. So now we just have to see what it tastes like. It smells so good. 
It smells really good. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous to try it, which is funny because I was so dead set on trying this recipe. I will say, um, one of the mistakes that I think I made is leaving my filling all clumped up in the center. Um, I can tell on two of these where I really didn't, like this is one of them that I didn't really flatten it down. So I have about an inch and a half of crust at the edges. So um, try to maybe, try to maybe smooth it out some, like kind of fill it out a little bit more towards the edges because otherwise you're just gonna have a big lump of filling in the very center and nothing along the edge. Like here, let me, let me show you. This had no filling. This is where the filling was, just right in the center. So I'm going to, and the whole purpose of a pocket pie is so that you can just pick it up and eat it. Um, but clearly I'm dissecting mine. So it's gonna be hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is really good. Definitely dicing the apples small was the way to go. I can still see, like here's a chunk of apple, um, but it's cooked down to practically nothing and it very much just melts in your mouth. It's got a little bit of a crunch still, but not any, like maybe crisp. Crunch is not the word I'm looking for, crisp. Um, I can see how this would be better with like chunks of onion. I may have overdone the onion powder a little bit. And I know I added more cheese than I was supposed to, but I think I would add even more next time. And I say next time because I'm calling this one a winning recipe. Even without the cheese in the crust, the cheese powder, it's flaky, it's delicious. I would make it again. There's a few things I would do differently. Um, adding the chunks of onion, definitely um, maybe doing like a cheesy powder for the crust. I can see where that would add a whole lot of value. Um, more cheese in the filling and spreading that filling out more so that there's more filling per bite instead of just a big round of crust along the edge. But other than the things that I would change and the, the mistakes that I made, I'm calling this for sure a winning recipe and I will absolutely be making this again. Ooh, as long as I don't dump it all over the floor. <laughs> so that wraps up week number 11 for the 2024 baking challenge. I hope that you baked along and I hope that you enjoyed this recipe as odd as it sounded because it really did come together in the end and I'm really happy that I took a chance and gave it a try. I hope that you will tune in next weekend because next weekend we are making something sweet and delicious and perfect for Easter weekend. So don't forget to hit the subscribe button here on the channel and also go over to the Facebook page because every Wednesday morning I'm going to post the ingredient list that you'll need for that weekend's bake. Um, leave me some feedback. Let me know if you tried this, if you enjoyed it, what you would change. If it was just way too weird of an idea for you and you were like, nope, I'm skipping this one, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. This is my baking challenge. It doesn't have to be yours. You can pick and choose the recipes that you want to follow along with. I will see you next week. Until then, keep baking.